another in a series of Microsoft Office training clips. Hey, this is a discussion about absolute referencing in Microsoft Excel. Absolute referencing is something you will not run into frequently. Absolute referencing is something you will run into. We're going to talk about creating a formula using an absolute reference using two methods. One with a dollar sign to absolutely reference a cell and another with a name. This spreadsheet tracks attendance for the months of January, February, and March for classes at Dell Institute. Below the list I have average attendance, high attendance, low, and totals for the month. If I want to calculate the total independent rate, that's a single user attending a class. The rate is $259 and it's in cell D3. Notice the rate is only in a single cell of the spreadsheet. To calculate the total independent rate, I would multiply D3 times E6, which represents the total. That's 31,339. But watch what happens when I fill down. I'll double click the fill handle and the formulas fill down. Rut row. The second value shows me zero. The third one shows me an error message, pound value bang. This error message means an argument of the formula function or array is of the wrong data type. I know instantly by looking at the result that I absolutely have a problem. To understand absolute reference, we first must understand relative reference. Take a look at the formula in cell E6. This is a sum function and it works on the range to the left, B6 to D6. If I move down to the next cell, the sum function works on the range B7 to D7. I'll move down, B8 to D8. B9 to D9. As I move down the column, the formula changes relative to the new position. This is relative referencing. Let's look at the formulas below the list. The average function works on the range B6 to B28. In the next cell, averaging C6 to C28 and then D6 to D28. As I move across the row, the column heading changes relative to the new position. This is good. I want this to happen. In the previous example, the formula multiplies D3 times E6. D3 times E6. But when I move down to the next cell, I have a relative reference. Now it's D4 times E7. I don't want D3 to change. I want it to be constant all the way down the column. I'm going to write the formula again. Equals D3 with dollar signs in front of the D and in front of the 3. The dollar sign is the symbol that will absolutely reference the cell in the formula. Times E6, except let's see what happens when I fill down now. I have some meaningful results. The first formula, dollar sign D, dollar sign 3 times E6. When I move to the next cell, dollar sign D, dollar sign 3. Next, dollar sign D, dollar sign 3. And again, and again, and again. The formula doesn't change based on the absolute reference. Another way to absolutely reference a cell address is by naming a cell. I have named this cell F3 DR. It stands for discount rate. Notice the name box. If I create a formula to calculate the total discount rate, I can use the name rather than the cell address and automatically get an absolute reference. Check it out. Equals E6 times DR, 
Microsoft Excel version 2007 shows me the name. When I accept the formula, I have a meaningful number and format with an accounting format. So to review, two conditions must exist for you to be concerned about an absolute reference in creating a formula. One, you're using a value in the spreadsheet that's in only one single cell. Both by independent rate and the discount rate meet that test. And after creating the formula, you're going to fill down or fill to the right. An absolute reference can be created by using the dollar sign before the column letter and the row number for a complete absolute reference, or it can be generated by naming a cell in the spreadsheet. Another Microsoft Office training opportunity brought to you by the Office Savon, Dell Institute.com.